keeping us with us for years. Uh, great to see you today. Uh, nice to see the sunshine streaming in through the windows. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody and uh, hope that we'll be uh, a blessing to each other today. Please join us after the service for coffee in the fellowship hall. Uh, stay and chat for a while, encourage each other. Um, just one announcement before we get going. A reminder of the congregational meeting that's coming up Sunday, November the 27th. You should have gotten a package in your email uh, with all the information. If you did not receive a package this week, there are printed copies available in the foyer for you to take home with you. That's all my announcements. Uh, let's prepare to worship. Uh, we're going to start by singing our gathering song, Be Unto Your Name. If you can stand with us, embody your spirit. morning. Our God calls us to worship the eternal Father who loved us and set us free from all our sins, who loves us still with that love that will not let us go, and who will love us forever, calls us to worship him today as the only true lover of our souls. The Lord stoops to receive the love of our poor hearts. He calls us to remember the depth of his love for us in Christ. God seeks our love, and he greets us. 
Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Amen. You may be seated. This time we have the children. I'd like to invite the children forward. We're going to sing another VBS song, if you guys remember this one, The Eye of the Storm. I don't know the actions, but I can sing with you guys. school. God reconciles himself to us. Please join me in a prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember with gratitude those people who have encouraged our faith. And above all, we recognize how you have encouraged us by the gift of the Holy Spirit so that our faith has miraculously and mysteriously grown. But we confess the times we fail to encourage each other the times when we have denied others the opportunity to expand their faith through our lack of interest or involvement. And worse yet, Father, we confess those instances where we have discouraged others with hurtful words, sideways glances, gossip, and slander. Lord Jesus, we know that these horrible things can only happen when we become disconnected from you. So forgive us, we pray, and renew our lives today so that we remain connected to you at all times and in all places and that we may encourage others with the same encouragement that we've received from you. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people say, amen. After honestly confessing our sins before our forgiving Father, we can be assured of the forgiveness of our sins. Hear the Father speak from Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. I will encourage you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Brothers and sisters, after hearing God's assurance of forgiveness, we offer this song that is like a prayer. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. So let me walk close to thee. Let's go to our God in a time of prayer. Lord God, we just pray that you would bring peace to this troubled world. Right now, as the war against Ukraine continues, we pray for the talks between UN officials and a Russian delegation to discuss a plan to smooth shipments of Russian grain and fertilizers to global markets. We pray that goes well. Guide their conversation into paths of compromise so that the hungry will have food and the fearful living through the war will be encouraged by their progress. Lord God, we continue to lift up Haiti and the turmoil there. But we are also thankful for the praise update from Children of the Promise. Lord, continue to bless the OTP through these difficult times. And may they continue to shine the light of Christ brightly in Haiti. Heavenly Father, as we remember the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church today, we think of Afghanistan. 
one of the most dangerous places for a Christian to live, especially since the Taliban took over the government in 2021. And we ask for peace and strength for all of your children, Lord, who face persecution in so many parts of this world. Vindicate your children, O oh God, and bring them into peace and safety. Merciful one, life here on earth is sometimes heartbreaking and volatile. So we need reminders to take notice of the beauty that surrounds us, even as we work to heal and hold fast to your promises to be with us, to renew us, and to reconcile what is with the hope of what can be. So Lord, we see and we celebrate the birth of little Alicia and are so excited to share this joy with Ray and Caitlin and, and Malachi. O oh Lord, new life reminds us of the, the type of God you are. You are a life giver, a life sustainer, a life redeemer, and a life recreator. Lord, you are with, with us through all of our times of joy and sorrow. Remember the Woodsmas, Clarence and Diane and Ron, and the entire family as they continue to grieve the loss of a dear loved one. Lord, comfort all those who grieve, encourage us and strengthen us. We praise you. We thank you for everything. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. This morning's reading is from Acts 11, 19 through 24. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw that the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged. He encouraged them all to remain true to, to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, Proverbs 11, verse 25 says this. Worry weighs a person down, but an encouraging word cheers a person up. We certainly need some cheering up as we continue to work our way out of a pandemic that just won't let go. But even before the pandemic started, there was a noticeable downtrend in Christianity in North America, something that, was, that has already happened in Western Europe. And now, years of pandemic has only exacerbated that trend. Pastors, 
leaders and congregants are leaving the church in droves. And it's sad. Sad and worrisome. It's especially worrisome when those statistics come to life and they strike close to home. These alarming statistics represent real flesh and blood people, members of our family, members of our church families. And it's not only sad and worrisome, it's discouraging. And this discouragement, like a COVID virus, can often be contagious. That's why at times like these do we ever need some encouragement. We need some encouragement from the God we worship and serve and encouragement from one another. We need that body of Christ as organism analogy coming to life. We need Christ, our head, who knows of our discouragement to instruct the Holy Spirit, which is kind of like our central nervous system, to give the organs and parts of the body what they need, in this case, strength and encouragement. Now, there are God-given ways and means for us to be encouraged. Whenever we spend time with God, whether that's in our personal devotions, our family devotions, or our worship here at church, we should be encouraged. I know that last Sunday was very encouraging to me as it was to so many others. We could sense the Spirit using us to encourage one another. Now, in the hopes of maintaining that momentum, we are going to spend some time this morning looking at a person named Joseph. Joseph, who we better know by his nickname, Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. People of God, there's no question that the the Christian church, especially in North America, needs renewal and revival. Our church needs that too. And we would all love some Apostle Paul type, some power evangelist to come in and save the day. But what the church needs most right now is a whole lot of Barnabases. Sons and daughters of encouragement. So let's take a look at this little text from Acts 11 to see how we can be encourages, encouragers to one another, spark, sparking that renewal that we all long for right about now. I'm indebted to the Center for Church Renewal for the insight that they provided in an article entitled Encouraging people being a Barnabas in a Paul world. And before we get to some lessons about encouragement, let's look at the context for a minute. The context is the early Christian church facing intense persecution. Stephen, a a spirit-filled deacon from Jerusalem, was recently stoned to death, and the people are terrified. Especially in Jerusalem where new Jewish Christians are leaving the area in droves. But here's the encouraging thing about our sovereign God who is in complete control. God knew all this would happen and he inspired these new Christians in different areas to share the good news of Jesus Christ wherever they went. And as a result, Christian churches started popping up all over the place. Even in Greek cities like Antioch. Who would have thought? There were even non-Jews that were coming to faith in Christ, which was relatively unheard of at that time. Largely because the apostles didn't preach to them. Now this 
said the church in Jerusalem, we've got to see. So who did they send? They sent Barnabas, the son of encouragement, which gets to our first lesson about encouragers. Encouragers are green light kind of people. They are ready to go when called upon whether that be a dangerous mission or not. Now, in order for any of us to be like this, we first need to get our own encouragement from Christ. If we ourselves are not spending time with Jesus, getting encouragement from him, we won't be ready to go. And if we go, we won't be very fruitful, will we? But if that's the case, brothers and sisters, the solution is easy. Make spending time with God a priority again. Clear off the schedule. Cut out whatever needs to be cut out. And put God first. Then and only then will we be ready to take a leap of faith when called upon. Not only that, when we are spending time with God, we will see clearly what God is doing. Encouragers can see what God is doing. Look at verse 23. When Barnabas arrived and saw what the grace of God had done. Sometimes when we're scared or discouraged, we can't see the forest for the trees. And we miss what God is doing right in front of us. Well, Barnabas has his eyes wide open to what God is doing. As encouragers, we need to remember that it's not all on us, or others for that matter. It's primarily God's work. It's his mission, and he will bring renewal. We do need encouragement from others, don't get me wrong, but others will disappoint us. God never will. So with God's help, let's see what God is doing right here and right now and be encouraged by it. Here's our next lesson from Barnabas. Encouragers know how to celebrate. If we continue on in verse 23, it says, When Barnabas arrived and saw what the grace of God had, do had done, he was glad, and he encouraged them all. Now, brothers and sisters, it's obviously much easier to be glad when the, when the church is growing in unexpected ways. It's a lot more challenging to be glad when we're at the other side of the spectrum. But still, it's important for us to celebrate, even the little things, and to do more potlucks and fun nights like we did on Friday. It was extremely encouraging to eat and to laugh and to play and to pray together, wasn't it? One thing many of us lament is that we don't get together for coffee or lunch with each other much anymore. Many of us grew up with that experience. Maybe it's time that we renewed that old practice of our parents and our grandparents. I know some churches have a practice where people volunteer to put their names in a hat and you pick out a name and you visit that person after church. That way you have a chance to, to be glad and encourage more, more than your immediate family or your circle of friends. Or maybe our circle of friends isn't always encouraging. So we could use some encouragement in our lives. If someone wants to kick that off, that'd be wonderful. Or just do it organically. 
Start inviting people over and encourage one another. Here's another lesson we can learn from this verse alone. Encouragers point to the truth. Look at how the verse ends. When Barnabas arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to do what? To remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. What Barnabas is doing here is encouraging these new believers so that they cling to the good news of Jesus even when times get tough. This is where our faith gets tested. How do we respond in times of adversity? For these early churches, they were exciting times, and many of these new converts were excited about the faith, and Barnabas was excited with them. But Barnabas knew that challenging times would come. So he wanted to encourage them to cling to the truth, which is Jesus. Remember who it was that brought peace to your hearts and who will continue to deliver that peace in good times and in bad times as they follow the words of Jesus from John 15, verse 4. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me, says Jesus. And these words segue nicely into our next lesson. Encouragers are full of the Holy Spirit. The first part of verse 24, we have this description of Barnabas. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, helps us to remain in Jesus. The Holy Spirit is always pointing us to Jesus and what he did and what he said. In our last Bible study, we looked at pride and humility. And we found that the antidote to pride is to boast on Jesus. Look at what Jesus has done. Look at what Jesus is doing. Even when we have personal successes, small and great, we give the glory to God. Great things he has done, especially in and through his one and only son. When we go in our own strength, the results will be eventual burnout. But when we go in the power of the Spirit, burnout is not possible. If we consistently ask the Spirit to lead and guide us, we will be able to do so much more for God and his kingdom will even experience joy and be strengthened as we serve. So as sons and daughters of encouragement, let's keep in step with the Holy Spirit. It's the only way to travel. A couple more lessons, brothers and sisters, and we'll take it in for a landing. The sixth lesson we can learn from Barnabas, the son of encouragement, is this. Encouragers are full of it, full of faith, that is. Luke, the author of Acts, says that Barnabas was a man full of the Holy Spirit and faith. When we feel stuck, when we wonder if things will ever change, when we are at our lowest, it's often then that our gracious God will give us a fresh look at Christ. The one we know is the source of our faith. 
scriptures and devotions and sermons and worship will come to life again. We will again be reminded of our first love. Brothers and sisters, our God is a generous God, a gracious God, and he longs to build up our faith. I recently stumbled upon this little video clip. It's from the television show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I don't watch the show, so I don't know if it has any redeeming values or not. But I did appreciate this video clip from one of the main characters on the show named Mac. Apparently, Mac has a favorite saying that I think will be encouraging to us. Check out this clip where Mac's, Mac is speaking to his therapist. I've had a slight fluctuation with my weight recently. I see. And how much weight are we talking about? I gained and lost 60 pounds in three months. Wow, that's almost impossible. Well, first of all, through God, all things are possible, so jot that down. With God, all things are possible, so jot that down. A wonderful reminder for us when we are feeling discouraged. With God, all things are possible, so jot that down. That's what the Holy Spirit tells us too. Every time we spend time with Almighty God and spend time together. Now for our seventh and final lesson. Encouragers often see incredible renewal. Look at the end of verse 24. Barnabas was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Now we know that there are also many stories throughout the Bible and in our own lives where people prayed for renewal and didn't get to see it firsthand. But that isn't the case here in Acts. Barnabas saw this revival firsthand. Encouragers, brothers and sisters, may or may not see revival in their time, but they don't stop praying for it. They don't stop seeking it. And if they stick around long enough, they may, like Barnabas, get to see the wonderful thing that God is doing in Christ and through them, through the community all to the glory of our God. Let's pray. Lord God, in these times of, in, this, in times when we feel discouraged, we're so grateful for the book of Acts, Lord, that wonderful, wonderful depiction of how your church started Lord, how there was difficulties and challenges, persecution and troubles and theological differences and infighting, all sorts of things to straighten out. But Lord, you were right there and you helped the churches grow. And here we are today, Lord, thousands of years later, worshiping you, looking back at these wonderful stories reflecting on people like Barnabas, a son of encouragement. Lord, it is our prayer that we would be given the nickname Barnabas or that we would become sons and daughters of encouragement. May it be said of us through the power of your Holy Spirit to your glory. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please stand in body or in spirit for our song of response, 
Guide me, O oh my great Redeemer. believe our offerings are for Reframe Ministries. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Reframe Ministries and our church budget. Reframe Ministries, uh, that's kind of something we forget, is that used to be Back to God Ministries. So it's the electronic media arm of the CRC, and they do wonderful work. And their uh, mission statement, which is ours too, we believe everyone everywhere should have access to the gospel in their own language. So your offerings will be received. Change your 
Let's pray. Lord God and Father, we're so thankful for all you bless us with. Lord, the giving to our church budget allows us to do what Reframe Ministries wants to do, Lord, and that is to proclaim your gospel, Lord, in word and in deed. And we're so thankful for this opportunity for us to give, first to our church and also to Reframe Ministries. Lord, take these offerings and bless them. And may everyone in this world hear the good news in their own language and come to Christ. May that revival that we've been praying for come to fruition where millions, if not billions, come to know you before your return, O Lord Jesus. Lord, use us, even us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand in body or in spirit as God sends us out with his blessing. This is from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort that we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. Amen. Joy.